So one of the things that I've been focused on this week has been the research by Matthew Van Hoff on beacon frames. So this is two different pieces of research really being presented as one. One of them is novel attacks against Wi-Fi devices using beacon frames. And the second one is uh, how to prevent that and how to be backwards compatible with existing uh, Wi-Fi standards, which is really hard, by the way. If you're trying to prevent new attacks in an old standard that's the that is vulnerable and have the fix be forward and backward compatible, really difficult stuff. So really, really interesting research. So let me give you the high points of this. So I've been reading this this week. It looks a little dense, but trust me, it's totally worth it. There are some attacks here that rely, rely on beacons and information elements. So information elements are these little fields inside a beacon frame that tell you about the, the network that you are either joined to already or that you are proposing to join. And it gives information like how much power uh, you need in order to transmit and other pieces of information that can be used to mess with the properties of the connection. So one of these attacks is silencing stations. This is something where you can advertise a beacon frame that says, hey, you have to wait a super long time before transmitting on this network. And if anybody transmits before that time is up, you have to reset the clock and start all over again. If you are to do this, then it means that any device that gets hit with this beacon packet will think that the network they are on has a change of rules effectively and now requires them to be silent and wait for other devices to transmit first before transmitting. And that means that that, that back off time is going to be so long that it never gets the opportunity to transmit because some other device is always going to jump in and start transmitting first. So this is a very sneaky attack because it effect effectively just changes the rules that different devices that are connected to Wi-Fi follow. And another one is draining the battery. So one thing you can do is send one of these beacon frames that says, hey, I have other frames for you um, that are queued. They're, they're being held by the access point and you need to basically check in and get the rest of them. And there are no frames being being queued, but by sending this packet, it causes the device to be like, oh, I guess I have to transmit back to the access point and do this exchange, and there's nothing there for them. So over time, hitting them with this beacon frame causes them to transmit another frame over and over and over, and this transmitting causes them to use more power. So if you want to start depleting the battery on a Wi-Fi device, this is a way that you can very sneakily cause it to send a bunch of unnecessary traffic and just get really hot really quickly and start running down the battery. And then another, my, my other favorite one from all this is targeted unfairness. So this is something that allows you to prioritize traffic for your device and make it so that other devices get a very, very poor share of the Wi-Fi network. So these are all different attacks you can do against devices purely based on them being on, connected to Wi-Fi, and receiving beacon frames. Now it's not completely even. Linux and Mac OS devices are more vulnerable to this. And for some reason, Windows devices that are using built-in Intel um, Wi-Fi cards are less vulnerable to these attacks. Hmm. However, if you're using like an alpha wireless network adapter or another type of external wireless adapter, then Windows devices are vulnerable, vulnerable all over again. So we're going to be looking at implementing some of this research in um, our prototypes and just seeing what we can and can't do. Because this kind of information is super useful if you're designing like a Wi-Fi chain of attack or looking for new ways to start messing with an access point. For example, one very common one is uh, if you used any of these attacks that disable someone's Wi-Fi connection, then you can potentially do something like uh, have them think the Wi-Fi is broken and that they need to enter their password into a, a like router update or something in order to get it restored. When in in fact, they're just giving their password to the attacker. So this is my favorite piece of research I've been uh, looking at. There is a video on this. So if you want to watch the presentation, it is right here on Matthew Van Hoff's channel, uh, protecting Wi-Fi beacons from outsider forgeries. But while it says protecting, a good the, the entire first half is about attacking. So a case, another ah. device. Yeah, so um, you can see attacks lowering victims' bandwidth. There's all sorts of really juicy Wi-Fi stuff in here. And um, this is pretty trivial to do. So I'm, I've been fascinated by this stuff. And if you like Wi-Fi research, then you should check it out as well.